and we're live. All right, Spence, you ready? I'm going to kill that music. Killed it, okay. killed it. Tell me. It's a beautiful Friday afternoon. The sun is out. The birds are chirping. But today, Spence, you know what we're going to be talking about? Tell me. We're going to be talking about the future of death. Morbid, dark, kind of contrasting to the beauty that we have outside today. <laughs> and that's the beauty of it, right? Uh, death is part of life. Uh, it's yep. inevitable. But do you want to hear a fascinating statistic that I found when I went down this rabbit hole? Let's see it. Let's hear it. I think this will blow your mind. The rise of cremation, specifically, went from 4% in 1960. Do you know what it is today? 4%, 1960, 50 years have gone by. I'd say it's probably at least 50% at a minimum. Close, close. So about 60 years have passed uh, up to 2024. Uh, we are now at 60% of the funerals are people choosing to be cremated. Interesting. That's crazy. From 4% to 60 in 60 years, that is right. a huge jump. Massive. Yeah, I wonder what. But do you know? Do you know what's pushing that and what's driving that? Uh, I have I have some suspicions. Uh, I've also okay. done a little bit of research on this. We're definitely gonna we're gonna talk about it today. Okay. Do you know what are your suspicions? My initial suspicion goes to well, cemetery which t- traditional burials with with a cemetery. I feel like uses a an enormous use of amount of land, right? So uh, we live in New York. We've got huge cemeteries. In Queens, in Brooklyn, I don't think, I don't know if Manhattan has them. I don't think they're, maybe the Bronx does. And it's just so much, with all due respect, unleveraged space for the living, right? Like it's just housing opportunities, parks. And maybe there's something, a similar sentiment across the country or the world as well. Your status for the US specifically, or is it mm-hmm. worldwide? US. Okay, US for sure. And I mean, I think that's my number one. And I think number two, people are less probably becoming more um, less religious. So less associating burials, you know, burials are very associated with, with the afterlife related to a religion. And whereas cremation is I, for me, I, I, although my, my grandparents were, were religious, it, I think there's something more secular about cremation. They were cremated. Um, and then the last thing I would say is, probably just like maybe just a a green perspective that I don't know of. Like maybe there's something about burial that, I mean, I don't think it's polluting, but you know, people have clothes and they have their belongings sometimes in the coffins and maybe that has some sort of impact on the soil. I don't know. That was just speculation though. Okay. So all, all of these three guesses that you made, those are no research, just uh, no research, no research. Just, okay. Yeah. 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 Just thoughts. I think you nailed it, dude. You're missing one, one obvious one, which is cost. Oh, interesting. It's more expensive. I didn't know that. Luckily, it's yeah. less. It, it's more that. expensive to bury and go through like the 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 casket, the tombstone, like just the, the funeral oh, procession, all of decorated that. Decorated too, right? Because there's a decoration and it's yeah, all the, the flower, flowers, all that stuff. It's it's more expensive to go the traditional route than the cremation route. But we'll we'll get into that in, in okay. a second. I just love these stats, man. They they completely blew blew my mind. I did not know that cremation became so popular so fast and do you want to know where it's going i i dove into this right right before the meeting the national funeral directors association right so the folks who who, who know the stuff well you know what they predict to, what, what what the stats are going to be 20 years from now no what 99 percent. you think you think they're going to level out the u.s cremation rate is expected to top 80 percent by 2045 so 20 oh, wow. years from now so from Flipped. 1960 to 2045 that is just it's basically i'm looking at a chart right here yeah it's basically a hockey stick it goes like this it goes a little bit and then flattens it just a little and then boom interesting dude. yeah yeah interesting though i wonder what you know what what are the challenges though like i'm trying to think of like cremation right cremation to me sounds again with all due respect more convenient it does sound cheaper right but is there some sort of harm that co- – like I'm trying to think through like – maybe I'll look it up. But there's some harm that comes with burning bodies like uh, you know, after people have passed away. What does that do to the air? 
there's got to be – I've actually never been to a place that does cremations, so I don't know what they look like. If there's a chimney, you know, I would imagine there is and what that what that does to the environment. Maybe it's minuscule. Maybe it's nothing. But just, just a thought there. Like, Because if there's not a big impact to the environment, then to me it makes all the sense in the world why people are leaning towards cremation for sure. Yeah, I, I think I think the main reason that um, I, th- I, th- I think the main thing that's holding back like true adoption of cremation is just mm-hmm. tradition, right? It's mm-hmm. kind of like what you said. A lot of it is religious based. So let's break that one down, right? I, I actually have four reasons for why I think cremation um, is is on the rise, uh, mm-hmm. and you, you you nailed three of them, and the fourth one was cost. But let's start from the bottom, right? So the, the religious aspect. There is obviously a drop in religion. Mm-hmm. There's also a, a change in religion, right? There's fewer prohibitions against cremation within the religious circles, right? People are just not frowning on it as much. Mm-hmm. It's it's just sort of being accepted more. So even those who are religious, they you know are opting to do this uh, to, to do cremation. But mm-hmm. you, you can't you can't just forget that there is a drop in religion, right? And as mm-hmm. a result. People are kind of stepping away from tradition in general, and they're they're no longer saying like just because my parents did this for their parents or their parents buried you know for, for their parents that we have to continue that tradition, right? It, it's it's a, society is evolving, and that's that's a good thing, right? Yeah. I'll pause there for a second. Any any thoughts? Yeah, no, no, and, and, and I, no, I agree. I agree. I mean, that's what I thought makes sense, and now that you confirmed it, like with with less religion, there's less weight on. You know the afterlife, right? People are more secular, even if they're spiritual, right? Uh, even if if people are becoming more spiritual and not necessarily religious, so I can see a lot of people maybe transitioning to being less, having less of a formal belief system, like uh, where they have got rules and religions and burials need to be a certain way. You know, you have to. You, there's the scriptures that we need to follow, and more of like, hey, I still believe in some sort of higher being, a spiritual you know, protector of the world or whatever it is that you believe in or a world that we return to, but it's not so, uh, it's not traditional. So I think people are okay with, Hey, we just need to remove, we need to make sure this person is just respected, their body's respected and we get rid of it in a way that's, you know, they, they're cared for, loved for, maybe sp- that means spreading the ashes in, in, in water or, or keeping it at home. I know some people have done that in the past. Um, so yeah, I, I could see that being one of the biggest impacts. And I think as religion continues to go down, yeah, I, I can see where to me, like, to be honest, man, I think about burials and, 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 and for me, while I respect it, especially in places like New York or, or high density places, it's just like, dude, what are you going to do in that? Sem- I mean, cemeteries, from what I understand, have a fixed you know, amount of land, right? From a width perspective. I don't know, maybe in Texas, there's cemeteries that are open-ended out to the desert. You know, maybe that that makes sense. But like in a place that's green, like in the Northeast, like in our region or the Midwest, uh, even some part of the Southeast, it's like dude, most cemeteries are gated, right? And I'm pretty sure every cemetery that I've ever been to has... Uh, coffins or tombstones from end to end. So what if I wanted to bury my family there? Where where would the room be? It's just not sustainable, especially as the Earth's population goes up. We cannot just have tombstones for every single person. Imagine we had tombstones for the eight, the six billion people or whatever the number is right now uh, of the Earth. It, that just it's, it doesn't seem like burials are, are sustainable, and it's probably the mind shift people are having as well. They're like. The, the younger generations are, who care about the future or are thinking more on a global scale, they're probably like, how does it make sense? Like we need to do something that ensures, uh, you know, we're being respectful, but at the same time, it's still like some sort of goodbye uh, mm-hmm. from the earth, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I would really say it's, it's, it's those two things. It's uh, capacity, mm-hmm. right? It's capacity. Defined. Yeah. And, and, and if you, if you think, uh, save it for a separate conversation, but for people, who have investments in the funeral business, mm-hmm. you have to think of that that business is, is in decline because they mm-hmm. have max, they're eventually going to max out their capacity. And then what are they going to do? And wow. I think that, yeah. so, so, so that, that, that's a pretty interesting one. It's kind of like investing in, you know, gas powered vehicles, right? You're not going mm-hmm. to continue to invest in that if you know that electric vehicles are the future. Right, right, right. 
I, I, I also think that uh, another kind of another interesting point to think about is people are making it clearer in their wills that like how they want to be treated in, in the, in the, you know, at, at death, right? Do they want to be buried? Do they want to be cremated? Mm-hmm. I think they're being more intentional and specific about it. Mm-hmm. I think people are also considering cost, right? Mm-hmm. If you, if, 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 if like our parents buried their parents, they know how much it costs and costs only go, go up over the years. They never really go down. Mm-hmm. And you have, you have the plot, you have the casket, you have the tombstone, you have all of the flowers, you have the, the hearse and the services. Uh, mm-hmm. it, you have the copies of the death certificates, which are like 15 bucks a pop. It's like transportation costs from wherever the person died to the funeral home. There's so many costs that you don't know about until you have to deal with it. And everyone who is in a position to create a will, they think about these things ahead of time because they don't want their family and their loved ones to have to deal with this on top of you know, the emotional pain. There's also yep. financial pain. Um, and, and like logistical pain, right? Just like yeah. all of these logistical Oof. things that you have to think through. It's, 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 it sucks. That's the worst so thing. I think, yeah. yeah. And so cost is just such a, such a big part of it. And I, I don't think that's ever going to change. You also said in, in the beginning, you don't know if Manhattan has cemeteries. Uh, Manhattan does have cemeteries. I actually think that I, I feel like they either are all tapped out. Or they're very close to being tapped out, specific, particularly the ones that are like that prime real estate. Mm-hmm. Um, they've just run out of places. And so any remaining uh, burial plots are just very expensive. There's a huge premium attached to yeah. that. But, you know, those people can pay for it. Yeah. So there, I, there's that. And, go ahead. No, no, yeah. I, no, uh, the only thing I was going to say, that, that from like kind of the opposite end, I can also see some people who are pro-burial have like the you know apart from probably being a little bit more religious traditionally they probably also have the mindset of it's hard to say goodbye to somebody you know i mean when you cremate somebody that person's totally gone in some sense right physically right versus burials like that person's still kind of there get you know fully intact put them into the coffin and you put them to rest in the earth there's probably something about that that feels a little more calming and reassuring to somebody so that's probably one of the pros. And two, it's like a physical remembrance. You can always go to the tombstone. You know how we always see in movies, people go to tombstones and they talk to those who have passed away uh, you know, prior. And yeah. out, there's a memorialization to aspect of it, whereas cremation doesn't have that. So those are probably one of some of the pros. I just wanted to lean in on why some people might want to do the burial. And I think the burial aspect probably also, apart from like space, it probably doesn't have much of an impact, I think, on the environment. I can't think of any, really, uh, as much as maybe cremation might, right? Because you put somebody into the earth, unless they're being buried with clothes, you know, toxic clothes or something. I feel like most you're saying, of the why, you're saying why you're asking if there's uh, environmental harm by physically burying someone? Physically burying somebody, yeah. There is. There is. And and that's one of the reasons that especially younger generations are moving away okay. from physically burying someone, uh, particularly when you embalm someone, which mm-hmm. I don't know if you know anything about that, uh, but you're no. such a, like, this is a very different conversation than we, than we usually have <laughs> on this show. <laughs> uh, but, but, but it's interesting. And, and yeah. I, I think, I think it, we, we could make it very informative. Embalming. So like when, when someone passes away, uh, all these gases start building up inside your body. Yeah. And so you fill them with this liquid and that's called embalming and it kind of preserves their body a little bit and just like prevents it from rotting um, before they have a chance to be buried. But embalming mm-hmm. is not only terrible for the environment because after mm-hmm. that body, when it's buried, it disintegrates and like, you know, the, the, the creatures and all that like eat away at it. Yeah. yeah. The, the bones after a while disappear as well. But the embalming liquid, that fluid, it actually seeps into the earth and that's terrible. That's terrible for right. the environment. I have also You're right. read that's true. That does make sense. Especially if some of the probably some of the material in the casket is probably bad, like bronze and certain metals and stuff like that. It might be, but also just imagine, you know, the cemetery next to the water, right? When it rains, mm-hmm. that embalming you know, fluid uh, it all uh, seeps somewhere. And so that's not good. I've also read that embalming is not good for the actual funeral uh, workers who are doing the actual process. I hear that it's terrible for, for them. Um, yeah. Would it have the same impact you think if, if we were doing 
mass funerals or, or mass burials and like the, that sounds terrible in, in like a desert let's say like you can have a burial but it has to be out like in, in the u.s we have the great deserts out west right so we've got like death valley do you think that'll have an impact just bury them under the sand <laughs> the, the land is basically on on dead itself like would that matter you're saying why even go through a cemetery when you can just bury someone? In oh, no, no. Like go through the burial process, but like let's not impact soil that we know is luscious and useful like that we have now. If you if you absolutely need a burial, why not do it out in the desert outside of Las Vegas? Like that could be a Las Vegas business. As, as kind of like skeevy as that sounds, it could Vegas has weddings, but it could also have burials, right? Like where it's like you do it in the desert, desert. And that impacts, I think, nobody because it's just sand. It's dead land. You don't really grow crops there. There's no water there. Maybe that's like an appropriate place to do that versus like in the Northeast or Midwest or the, the Great Valley of the center where we have all our vegetables and farms. Yeah, definitely, definitely something to think about. You, 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 you just reminded me of a previous point that you made. So I think one, one of the main reasons that uh, people have not fully adopted cremation yet is exactly what you said. It's it's when you physically bury someone, you have a place to visit, right? Mm-hmm. It's uh, whether they over time are not really there, their bodies are not really there, they're disintegrated. Um, it's still there, there's some connection there. Mm-hmm. I think that the future of funerals and burials is not do you physically bury someone or do you cremate them. I think there's going to be an evolution, and in the middle of that evolution is going to be yeah, you cremate someone, but you bury them. You bury that urn with a t- with a tombstone you, with a tombstone, and you still have a place to visit. But smaller, still, very much smaller, though, right? Like, yes, and 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 being smaller helps the real estate, right? So, like, okay, well, all these uh, cemeteries are going to realize we are at ninety percent capacity. What do we do now? I think they're going to start splitting up the the land, the the, the, the plot of the land to allow for those small cremation uh, for, for first burials. Well, so that's hey, more. But we'll hit capacity with that too, though, right? It's in places like New York, let's say like very populated places where it's already tight. That's why I was saying the desert to me makes sense. Like that could be like having a burial could be like a, I know not everybody's going to love this, but maybe it is a a premium, right? Like it's a premium. Like think about it. Because if, if you're going to have a space reserved for your loved, your dead loved ones, it's like, why do you get to use that space? Unless it's your house. Maybe you just do it at home, bury it there. But if you want it in a cemetery, maybe it's like, oh, you want to have a shared public land space reserved just for your dead loved ones who will never come back. Perhaps, okay, do it at a premium and do it in a place of not your choosing. It's got to be in the desert, you know, something like that. And then you can, you can still go visit them. Hey, we're going to go to, we're going to go to Vegas to visit you know, we go yearly and then we, we go gamble and then we go visit our, our uncle. There's, there, there's something there for, for some reason I see you taking <laughs> away from this conversation, a business idea, and you're going to go build a cemetery. Dark. But 10 years from now. Yeah. But you're a great business, you know, it's <sighs> always, always being replenished. Just like, just like, um, just like weddings. Funerals are just on the other side of that equation. Oof, yeah, and, and, and so, but but you, but you 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 bring us to to the next to the next discussion, which is okay. What is what is actually going to be the future of it, right? So, if people are, okay, yeah, they'll choose. Some will choose to cremate, but some might choose to bury it in their backyard. Maybe mm-hmm. not necessarily the entire body, because that's odd and maybe illegal. Uh, not sure about the 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 regulations there. I, yeah, I'm I'm confident that some states allow it and some and some don't. Yeah, but I have I have seen some very interesting executions uh, of this um, of, of uh, ex- executions and in, in different approaches that that people are doing now. One of my favorite ones is because you mentioned the backyard. I actually saw it in Shark Tank. The, this this person was pitching this product. It was called, um, I think it was called the Parting Stone. And the mm-hmm. Parting Stone, what they essentially do is they will cremate the person, and then yeah. they're going to convert that and like really press it down like a diamond, 
into these very pretty white stones. Okay. And then these white stones are, they, they kind of look like, I don't know, if you imagine that my AirPod case is like that stone. You get like mm-hmm. three of them and you could arrange that in your backyard, like next, you know, next to the flower bed or something like that. So if you're looking for that kind of reminder and you want the person close to you and you don't want to pay for all the outside funeral fees, that's mm-hmm. an option that, that I think that, like, we know that that's a business. Um, just mm-hmm. search for a parting, parting stone shark tank. That's not bad. That's actually, I, I, that that's kind of nice in a way. Cause it, it kind of, it seems like the most sustainable kind of futuristic, clean way to memorialize somebody you can have in, in a way that's also not, not very, not not the cremation is icky, right? But like you can knock over an urn and, and you, you ever see those movies? I don't know if this happens in real life. I'm sure it has. It's Meet the parents. Like that. Meet the parents, knock over the urn and it's just ashes everywhere. Those type of things don't really happen in that case, right? It's, it's also just a constant reminder. I'm glad you brought that up. Just looking yeah. at the urn in like your living room, I never, I, that never appealed to me because you just have that in your face. You can't move on, right? Part of death is moving on. Totally. And I think that prevents people from doing it. Sorry, I interrupt you. No, no, no. That that's exactly it. Yeah, it's just, it, it may, making people. It, it's just something a little lighter about it, right? It's pretty. It's a stone. It's a, it's a great memorial. It, it's just a more positive way to look at it, right? I think mm-hmm. urns also have a more negative connotation to them. Oh, like the, metal, the cold. Yeah, metal, cold. You know what's inside. Like th- those type of things, just just kind of dark. So, I mean yeah. that that to me, I love that personally. Yeah. Okay. So that that's that's an option. Uh, when 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 you die, that's I'm gonna keep in mind. That's how you want to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Take that down. Yeah. I'll, I'll I'll keep you as a stone on my <laughs> on my, yeah. on my work desk. Another way, though, you know, speaking of like pressing it down into a diamond, is some people wear it as a ring. Some people wear it as like a pendant. You know, and and um, that that doesn't really appeal to me, but I I see the appeal. You know, it's something you make something beautiful out of a you know not so beautiful moment, right? Another yeah, doesn't, one, that doesn't appeal to me out of the, the pendant thing, but I get it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, we, we get it. Um, another one, though, that I've been seeing on on Instagram lately, I, I actually love this concept. If you do visit someone in the cemetery, I've been seeing these. Um, they're almost like QR codes that you scan with your phone. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm going with this, or you, or you haven't heard of this at all? I've never, I mean... I've never heard of this, but the, the, yeah, yeah. the implementation of technology in this is it's kind of weird. But again, I'll keep an open mind. I'll keep an open mind. I know you guys don't, <laughs> viewers don't, who've actually watched this, I don't say that very often weird, but QR code, Cemetery of the Dead is a is an interesting mix that I've yet Can, to cross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I wish I could take a screenshot of your face <laughs> while you were being kicked out. <laughs> but when you scan this QR code, what you see is something kind of beautiful. Um, I saw okay. an example where someone someone scanned. It was I think it was this old gentleman who passed away, and you scan it and you go to a site, and it's a video of him and his uh, wife just dancing, and it's just so a, it's a video. More, so it's a memory. Yeah, and it's just capturing their moment while they were still alive. Um, I saw I saw another on your one, phone. Uh, on your on your phone or what, yeah whatever you scan with. Could I tell you what what would be the difference between that and just having the video on your phone though that you can watch at any time? Because others can go and they can find out about this person if they're interested. Oh, interesting. Right, right, yeah. right. So if I go to a cemetery, let me see, and I'm just like, oh, who was this person? I can open up the video. Imagine or, imagine, or do the QR imagine, code. Exactly. Imagine uh, places where this is actually a, a, not a disrespectful thing. Mm-hmm. Um, like New, New Orleans, right? They, yeah. they, they really, uh, depending on the cultures, they really promote. They, they don't shy away from death, right? And so I feel like they also give tours, right? Like cemeteries. Mm-hmm. So can you scan something there, and then you see some interesting historical fact about this person? Yes. That that that's 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 kind of cool. I I kind of like that. Or if you scan it and you see, you know, like you said something, you did like a TED talk or something that changed the world. Uh, Mm -hmm. Let's say that's the video that pops up. I can see like a really memorable speech. Or if Mm -hmm. I left something and I want to communicate it from beyond the grave, anyone can go and they scan it. They don't have to have a video on their phone. Like anyone from my family, they could scan it and they can just like see that person alive for for just a minute minute or two. There's something really beautiful about that. That that, that is, that is, that is, especially for those who are like who have been hundreds of years from now go to a cemetery and say, Oh, look, it's my great grandpa or like my great grandparent. 
and I never knew them. I don't know anything about them. I heard they were buried here. I wonder what they looked like or what they were. Even though we have, a, we're going to have a bunch of digital assets at that point. You may not, you might not be in touch with the family that has those assets, right? So you go there, and boom, scan it, and then you, you can see that experience. So yeah, I, I totally get that. I, uh, Max, unless you had another thing, I was curious to think of some other alternative solutions that I wanted to put out there. But I wanted you to finish any thoughts that you had going down. Yeah, no, I'm good. I'm, I'm excited okay. to hear what this Okay. Okay. So two thoughts, and they're not groundbreaking. I'm sure people have thought about these, but like the thought of uh, space burials. Right. I'm pretty sure I've seen that already somewhere, YouTube or some article out there. Like space burials, where it, rather than burying somebody underground, you launch them into space, right? To be among the stars. Now, you don't memorialize anything. I guess you send, actually, it might be a combination of sending ashes to space or some, something along the lines, right? You're sending them to the heavens. I wonder if that could potentially be a, a far future version of burials where we send our ashes to the stars to be amongst if you're religious the gods or god uh the heavens and that way we don't really have to worry about impacting like taking up any land and then the other one is like a like a like a very environmentally unconscious one where it's like you freeze dry the body instead of burning so totally freeze dry. So you reduce it into a completely biodegradable like material from the body. No, no, I, the thing you introduced me today, I, for, I forgot the name. The I didn't know what it was when people get buried. Embody, embodied? Embalmment. Embalmment, embalmment. Don't do that. Super freeze dry and then still do the traditional burial, maybe with like a biodegrad- biodegradable casket that's decorated the way you'd like to. Um, are, are kind of two thoughts of like alternatives that I can think of. Oh no, actually I'll give you a really far fetched one. I'll give you a number, a third one. The third one is uh, imagine 50 years from now, AI gone nuts, crazy AR and VR have gone insane. This is a black mirror inspired one. We are 110, 105 because you know, our lifespans have having increased the third alternative before we die is, Hey, let's upload our conscious. Even if it's not, even if we're not really going to live that digital world, we upload a version of ourselves that's pretty much immortalized that can live digitally, right? It's almost like an AI, in simplest terms, think of an AI bot or an a, a chat GPT wrapper that has us physically and has our personality the way it, it speaks to. So now you're like this digital immortal being that you've passed away physically which is going to be, I'm sure we'll have some sort of trauma for some people, but you can still talk to that person after they passed away. So we pass away, but our kids or friends can still talk to us via, via VR and AR. They have a personality. They've got same old look. Maybe we look like we do in our, in our forties. Cause we decided that's when we were in our prime, uh, when we were uploaded and that's, that's who you speak to Would that, would that kind of bug you if you had that, that going on, that third option that I just mentioned as an alternative solution. So uh, are, are these all things that you're going to be offering as upsells in your Las Vegas desert burial business that I, you're going to run? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> it's just like, look, don't stop with burying. You know, we've got other options. <laughs> um, okay, so the freeze the freeze dried one I'm going to um, disregard because I, I don't know that much about it. It kind of sounds it's too similar to my Hello Fresh, uh, which which is which I'm going to be cooking tonight, and I don't want to associate it <laughs> freeze dried, yeah, freezer dried. <laughs> the the space barrel ones I'll, I'll get to second, but uploading our consciousness is a really fascinating one. It's not that far away. It's actually being yeah. done today in a way. One of the people who, uh, so Will, William Shatner, mm-hmm. he, he, I, I, I think if you just Google his name and, and something around this topic of just like, um, he's doing it. He's like, what, what a, a, pilot? A, AI, AI beyond the grave. I, I think he's doing it with himself. It's not unreasonable at all because g- given, so, okay, so let's, let's break it down. Think about how you would oh, teach wow. AI. Oh, wow, found it. You, yeah, yeah right, right away, right? You teach AI either um, through, like, social media, right? Let, it, let yeah. it just scan all of your social media websites, how this person spoke, what their uh, 
how they thought and just kind of create that into uh, patterns and then use those patterns to answer any questions that your kids and your grandkids are asking you after you're dead. Not unreasonable at all. Being done today, I have zero doubt that this will be a very big part of afterlife, uh, of just afterlife, right? The other angle of it, though, is the show Upload on Prime. I don't know mm-hmm. if you've ever seen it. But uh, there no, but it's... Sad. I, go, tell me, tell me. I think yeah. so, I, think so I know like where this is going. It's, it's a little bit more in, in depth than this. Like you go into a, it's not just you're communicating with an AI and it can answer, you know, basic questions the way William Patner is. But there you go. You put on VR goggles and you actually go and you can really engage with that person. You can hug them. You can hold them. You can. Uh, but not do, a, yeah, you, you can do. But you, not you a digital instance. Not a digital instance of this person. Like this person's actually. And then this might be a little bit over our heads for this particular episode, but <laughs> are you interacting with that person as we know them? Uh, a AI generated version of that. Ah, okay. That so has it's not the like same traits as you, who you know. It, it's not that I've uploaded myself into up this system, and that's where I live now. My I've I've gone away from my body, and I'm just like, oh, I live in this like digital world where I can yeah, experience that's, that's, whatever that's, that's, I want. That's not, that's not what I'm saying, but I think that what you're saying is fully doable and will be part of that equation. Okay. To be it's discussed not, not in another reason. episode, by the way. Yeah, but, but but also to be discussed in the future. You know, it's not, yeah. um, it's not, it's not a reasonable. I think it will happen. Well, uh, that's just immortalizing yourself, isn't it? Like, it's basically, hey, I'm going to upload, I'm going to put, I'm going to upload myself into a server and I'll just watch all the video. I'll live in all the video and content uh, that I want. You, so if you watch the show, they get into some interesting, like uh, the logistics of this. So who, so um, continuously generating someone via AI requires processing power, requires servers. Who pays for that, right? So do your relatives mm-hmm. continue to pay for that, and for how long? And then if they're going to engage with you, do they engage with you in a really tech-heavy world where you can, you know, I want to go to Six Flags with this person that mm-hmm. requires more money, or I just want to talk to them at the dinner table that requires less money. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you want it to be Def- colored? Do you want it to be black and white? Right. Like, and, and so who continues to pay for it or is it part subscription? Of, what, exactly. But then what if people stop paying for it? Um, or is this something that you prepay before you die as almost like mm-hmm. a life insurance policy? Like Interesting. You use that for death. Lots of questions there. And a lot of, a lot of upsell. No, no, that, yeah, yeah. That's a lot of upsell right there too. The, it sounds terrible with death. Stelling and death to me is like a weird combo that I personally don't want to deal with, but I understand it's part of life. The uh, the aspect of like, oh, you know, hey, you know, make sure you're fully backed up. Add another one hundred dollars or prepay, you know, the the one hundred thousand, so that you never have to worry about a payment ever again. You'll always be immortalized. Even in the case of like the world ending, we have a backup generator that'll keep you alive <laughs> and launch you yeah, to the it, next planet. <laughs> I know we're joking about it, but yeah. that's sort of what funerals, uh, um, funeral homes offer today. It's yeah. but in their case, it's very limited. It's prepay, uh, pay this amount, and we'll you know brush off all the leaves and clean all the snow for the life of the for the life of this uh, grave, as like forever <laughs> indefinitely, right? But What's interesting about us discussing this is it shows us how much more opportunity and possibilities there are mm-hmm. if we move away from the traditional burial. Yes, cremation is going to be part of it, but then there's so much more like this uploading our consciousness mm-hmm. or AI that can happen afterwards. Which we're not was, even talking about... Yeah. Which would still need to... If we're talking about the upload and the consciousness, we still need to... The body needs to be... <laughs> Sound like I'm doing a murder here. Dealt with <laughs> <laughs> the body does, in some sort of fashion, does. right? It does. It does very true, but it's it, you almost minimize that step, right? Right, 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 right. And, right, and right, then you right. focus on all these other things around it, and then maybe you add other up, <laughs> upsells, like, um, hey, I want my um, I want my grandfather who who passed away. I want him to be able to send me gifts when I get married or send me yeah. gifts on my birthday for the next 10 years Wow! Uh, yeah. that he prepays for. Right. And, and then, you know, like you want this book or like, I want, so, so like sending messages from beyond the grave, I think is a concept that has not really been tapped to its full potential. 
And there's so many opportunities that are mm-hmm. far more innovative than I want to be compressed into a stone. Yeah. Uh, or I just want to be buried and let the worms, you know, eat, eat my body. But how about, how about some eternal, <laughs> I'm just, I just thought about something. What about some eternal dictators in the world? <laughs> just like <laughs> just no i'm just it just made me think like oh oh uh N- north korean dictator is gonna die he decided he doesn't want to have a burial he's actually gonna upload himself um looks like he's and he's gonna govern from the upload looks like we're in for a ride forever <laughs> it, it, it's, it's interesting. it almost sounds like an onion article i'm willing yeah. to bet that what you just said at some point with someone becomes a reality in the future what, how totally. can anyone stop it, right? Like if if North, if, the, if the North Korea if the North Korean dictator knows about this idea of uploading a consciousness, of course he's going to opt for that. Yeah. You know, if, if if in Russia you have you have you have Putin who you know he's just like a president, the de facto president, right? He's just going to right. continue to be. Why would he not explore this this path? Not unreasonable. Not unreasonable, not unreasonable that they're all exploring it at this moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but for the rest of us, uh, you know, regular people, I'm I'm kind of happy. Yeah. I'm kind of happy to see that it's it's evolving so. to be. People are talking about death a little bit more. It's being treated in a not so icky way. Mm-hmm. But there's so many more opportunities to actually make it a better experience immediately after the death happens. But more importantly, for however long you want to maintain that relationship and define the type of relationship that you want to have. That's does cool. it make That's powerful. it definitely? But does it make it harder to let go? I think it does. That's why I said for, we talked for, about that. I, I fully agree with you. I, I think I think letting go. That's why I said like if you want to send, if you want your grandfather to send gifts for the next ten years, that's perfectly fine. If you want him to keep sending you gifts for the next fifty years, that makes it harder, in my opinion, to let go. And mm-hmm. I think letting go and moving on and living as much of your life as you can after the fact is mm-hmm. such a big part of life that we should we totally. really shouldn't forget. And we we can't just. I'll put it out there. Yeah. yeah. Should we wrap right. it up? Yeah, yeah. Let's wrap it up. This is a good one. A yeah. little off topic from our usual thing, but uh, <laughs> this, is, this is interesting. Like Absolutely. It. All right. We'll catch you next time.